Good morning to all of you. Good morning. Let me actually. Let me get my lighting area. Give me a second. Okay, so this is what we discussed last time. Okay, so you see that as for the GL, the general ledger, don't forget GLs again be containing the total values. So as for the general ledger, we say that the table's value that is reported will be, for example, $10,000. Okay, so what happens? You have to go into detail, okay, to assess how was this ten thousand dollar came about. Okay, so for example, you go now to the payables ledger, payables ledger, okay, to understand the details, okay, of course from the individual account. You can have, for example, a rent payable, okay, is constitute two thousand, okay, salary is payable, okay, constitute three thousand. Okay, you have suppliers for raw material that is still outstanding. You have not yet paid for the raw materials, okay. I will be equal to the balance of, for example, 5,000, okay? Of course, therefore, to get the details of the 10,000 here, okay, you have to go to the payables ledger, okay? You want to know the details, so you have to go to the individual account that makes up that particular account, okay? If, for example, you don't want to know, where is this load coming from? Now you have to go to, now, the rent account itself, okay? You have to go to the rent account itself. If you want to know how is this 3,000 coming up, okay, you have to go, to, therefore, to the wages and salaries account, okay, itself, okay? That's, that's the name, okay? So you have to go to the individual account that you have told you to. Uh, if you want more information, so you have to go lower and lower. So in GL, don't forget to say that the, what appears in the GL is what is going to make, uh, what is going to be used in preparing the final financial statement, okay? The final financial statement will be prepared based on what appears in the GL. For example, the payables here of 10,000, when preparing the financial statement, the payables value will be 10,000, okay? So this is, where upon, this is the accounts or the, the ledger upon which the final financial statement will be prepared. But now as mentioned, if you want to get the detail, then you have to go to the payables ledger, for example, uh, the purchase ledger. If you want to know about the revenue, the income the company has been making for the last one financial year, what do you do? You can go therefore uh, to the case of the sales ledger, this time out, okay? You go to the sales ledger to tell me therefore, within the particular year, okay? How has the company, how has the company made its uh, its sales, okay? Now you go to the sales ledger, okay? <clears throat> That's in the case of okay. So that's in the case of the purchase ledger, okay. <clears throat> purchase, purchase ledger or the uh, payables ledger, okay. Then of course we have what we call the receivables ledger, okay. The sales ledgers I think, I think I've mentioned, okay. Now here, don't forget, it's more towards detailing, okay, or trying to give us more detail regarding the sales the company has made within a given time period. It's about the sales company has made over a given time period. So all the information regarding the sales the company has made, uh, be they be car sales, okay, uh, be they be sales on credit, okay, they will be contained in this sales ledger, okay, they will be contained in the sales ledger, okay. So for example, if the company, if you don't want to get to, to understand uh, as per the company's book, okay, uh, we have a payable balance of, okay, the same way I've mentioned, we have a payable balance. Uh, as for the GL, the receivable balance, the receivable balance as per the general ledger is 20,000, okay? You want to understand where is this 20,000 coming from, okay? Uh, how did the 20,000 arise, okay? What do you do? Now you go therefore to the payables, uh, you go therefore now to uh, the receivables ledger, okay, the sales ledger, okay, trying to understand where this thousand ten thousand is coming from, okay. The same way, Miss Chair. Get me. Okay, so if for instance, for instance, okay. Uh, as for the GL, we have here the balance for the level. Okay, so here, allow me to double this. 
Okay, as for the GL, we have the balance for the CUA loan, BN equal to 20,000. Okay, this for the CUA loan, it means that this is a surface, this is a service, okay, or this is a product you have offered, and you're yet to receive from the customer. The customers are yet to pay you the money, okay? So you want to understand where did this 10, 000, uh, 20 thousand came from, okay? Because it appears in a GL, okay, the 20 thousand. But the question is that where did it come from, okay? You want to understand the details of the 20 thousand. So what do you do? You go therefore to the receivables ledger itself, okay? So here, therefore, we go to the sales ledger or the receivables ledger to understand uh, that 20 thousand balance there, okay? The receivables ledger. To understand where the 10,000 was coming from. For example, the company may have made maybe the service on credit, okay? Service for on credit, okay? Let's say they made a service on, let's say, 5,000. Uh, here, they actually, there's a commodity sale that they made. So there's a commodity sale, okay, that they made. However, they received the money of 15,000, okay? They have this make, therefore, the 20,000. So in case you don't understand uh, where this 20,000 that was appearing in the general ledger, that you have to go therefore to the resource ledger itself, okay? And now to understand in detail, okay, uh, the 5,000, now what do you do? You're going to have therefore the service, maybe there'll be a, a service, uh, uh, these do have a service contract, okay? Let me show a service account, okay? So if they book the service, okay, therefore you understand, you want to understand exactly how the file came about. So you have to go to the individual account for service account now, this time around, okay, the T accounts, okay, the individual T accounts for the service, as well as can have here, the, uh, an account for commodity, okay, trying to understand how this 15,000 came about, okay. So it's, a, it's like a step, okay, from financial, from financial statement to the GL, from the GL to the individual ledgers, from the individual ledgers to the individual accounts, okay? It's like a step wise, okay? <clears throat> That's the case of the restorables ledger, okay? Look, I'm only mentioning the key ledgers, okay? There are more ledgers than this, but I'm only mentioning the key ledgers, okay? <clears throat> An example. Okay, what's the answer? Payables ledger. Payables ledger. Okay, that is. I'm not sure it was from. Hannah, what do you think? Hannah. 
Hana? Um, I think it's a general or nominal ledger. Don't forget, don't forget. Thank you, thank you, Hannah. This, this is general or the nominal ledger. As you can see, this ledger, as I have just mentioned, it contains uh, all the different accounts in the company. Okay, we have rent, you have, you have electricity, you have travel, you have current assets, you have non-current assets. So it contains is a whole sum. It contains all the different accounts of the company. Okay. This is a general ledger. It is not specified. It cannot be payable because here we're not dealing with the purchases made on credit. Okay. So the payable ledger deals with the purchases the camera has made within a given time period. Okay. This is this not about purchases. Okay. The receivable is about the sale the camera has made within a given time period. This applies also to the purchase day book. This is, a, this is the book of prime entry. Okay. The purchase day book. So it can't be either of those. It can only be general or the nominal ledger. Why? Because it is not constrained to a given particular account is general okay rent account exchange account travel account non current account okay because this is therefore this is a general or a nominal ledger okay I hope it's clear okay great <clears throat> now all that information okay when it comes to don't forget you can prepare uh based on the if you have there the one you've gone through okay from the purchase day book okay from the general ledger you can prepare two types of uh, uh, information, or you can extract two types of information, either information more towards the financial accounting, the financial report inside of it, or the cost accounting information, okay? So you can, the same set of information, okay? You can extract two types of accounts, okay? Or two types of uh, reports from it, either from, for financial accounting use or for cost accounting use, cost accounting or management, uh, management accounting use, okay? Now for the case financial accounting, I think you've done this already and you're doing this in financial accounting, okay? They, for example, you contain amount paid for purchases of wages, okay? These are the amounts that appears on the financial statement, okay? These are the amounts that will be appearing in the financial statement. In the case of the cost account information, quite unlikely we'll be finding this information, okay? Don't forget, for most of the time, this information are for internal purposes, okay? Uh, for example, you as Safaricom, you do provide uh, uh, data, okay? But to you as Safaricom, you may want to, what, how much cost do we incur in providing this particular set of uh, products, okay? Uh, for every customer we have, what's the cost we do incur in making sure they have the data? What is the cost we have? You may not get this, you may not get this information uh, from the financial statement. However, for the internal use, then this is information is going to be necessary for the company internal consumption, okay? For example, how much materials register has been uh, incurred in production of each of the item? Okay, for example, you as Falcom, when it comes to provision of the data services, okay, what is the cost you do incur? Okay, we require uh, X number of uh, manpower uh, to maintain, let's say, home fiber, for example. Uh, these are salaries we do, we do pay to them. Okay, uh, this is the cost we incur for material of the home fiber, for example. Okay, so all those that information, okay, will be for the internal use. Okay, there's more to us, the cost accounting or the management accounting information, okay? The key distinction between the two of them, okay? It's simply more towards uh, how or who, this information, who is it being prepared for? Okay, that's kind of another key distinction, okay? We're going to discuss them uh, a little on, the key distinction between MA and uh, uh, management accounting and financial accounting. Mm -hmm. So do a key distinction between the two of them. But necessarily, it's more towards this information. Who are you preparing it for? Is it for the external users? Okay, by external users, people outside the company. That is, uh, the shareholders, the government. Okay, uh, the maybe in case of your bank to the CBK. Okay, now those is information prepared for external users. Okay, in the case of cost accounting, is more towards the information being be given to the management. Okay, so that they can make a decision about, for example, uh, planning about the controlling purposes, okay? So you prepare that information. It is meant for the internal users, the employees, as well as the manager, the management of the company. So they can make decisions, okay? They can make a decision based on the information provided, they can make a decision as well to go forward. For example, uh, if currently we do incur huge cost when it comes to provision of the fiber services, what can we do? We can decide, hey, uh, let's increase the price, okay? The cost we incur is too high, okay? So we as management, what do we do? We're going to increase, for example, the price we charge to our customer. That's more towards the cost accounting information. Okay, it's more towards cost accounting information. 
financial account information, you provide this information to the shareholder. This is the profit your company has made within a given time period. Okay, this is the increase in your asset position from 10 million to 20 million. Okay, so you're giving this information to the external users, okay, from giving them more information regarding the company, but not about the internal affairs of the company, not about the product costing of the company. Okay. In case you don't, you don't understand something, but, uh, make sure you ask questions, okay? Make sure you ask questions. If there's a point you didn't understand, uh, don't forget, don't let it uh, pass you. Ask questions, okay? <clears throat> now, we have two types of accounting system that you can follow as a company. Uh, either we'll call integrated or we'll call interlocking, okay? Integrated or interlocking. Most often than not, uh, for most entities nowadays, okay, not in the old days, nowadays, uh, they do have for call computer systems, okay, they do have computer system, okay. Uh, where you mean therefore, if for example you do make a purchase, you don't need to record it manually, okay, that's the, uh, the world we are in, okay. So if you make a sale, maybe in the case of a supermarket, they don't record manually. They have made a sale of X unit at this price. No, they just need to wrap up to scan uh, in the system that, hey, this is a sale you have made uh, uh, at this point in time, this is the price, okay? So generally, you can have therefore that information, okay? So most of the time, okay, the accounting system that will be utilized, okay, will be the integrated accounting system, okay? What do you mean therefore? We don't make a distinction that this is costing information or this is money information. Okay, we are going to be recording as a single file. Let's say a single file. Okay, uh, the data entry, okay, or the data processing is done only once. Okay, however, the extraction, okay, in the say in the back end, okay, uh, the users can extract the information based on their need. Do we need a financial accounting report? Okay, do we need a manual accounting report? Okay. So it is possible, for example, to extract, okay, uh, a money, if for example, is a, for example, the case of a retailer, the case of a supermarket, okay, they can make a decision that you're gonna be able to extract financial statement within a given month, okay, by maybe doing a query to the system, okay, what are the financial uh, position of the company uh, on, uh, at the end of the month, okay. Then, then what happens at, at the end of the day, you may also want to get information within this month, how many units have we sold? At the beginning of the month, how many units we had at the beginning? We had 10,000. Within the month, we have sold uh, uh, 9,000. So therefore, there was a balance. We have a balance of 1,000. What do we do? We want, for example, make more procurement, okay? We need to increase the balance, okay? Uh, from 1,000 to, let's say, to 5,000. So we need to procure 4,000 units extra, okay? So this information, okay, the same sort of information is now being used for the side of the management accounting to make to help the management make the decision. Okay, the motto was the management accounting uh, it from your side. So you only maintain one system. Okay, however, the other way the managers will be extracting information might be different. However, we are going to be having we are going to be recording once. Okay, for the two systems, for the financial accounting and for the management accounting, you only maintain one system. It is integrated. Okay, by the time. Now in the case of the interlocking. Okay. Now this is the difference. This is where, if for example, we have a manual system, okay, okay, it it, it, it might come or say in case the company is using a manual system, okay, where when it comes to the recording of the information, we record for the final accounting separate and record for the cost accounting separate, okay. Then at the end of the day, you will reconcile the differences, okay, because there could be differences between what appears on the financial accounting side and what appears on the manual accounting side, okay. So again, you're going to be preparing, okay, the two set of information individually, one for financial accounting and one for management accounting. Okay, of course, as you can imagine, it's more work in case the company uses interlocking systems. Okay, uh, there will be more issues, okay, to be encountered. Okay, but it's, if the company uses computer system, then but it's like an automatic. They'll be using integrated accounting system. So quite likely, they'll be using the interlocking uh, accounting system. Why would they, for example, you may have, for example, you can actually be able to extract uh, and get the uh, uh, profit from both the financial accounting and well as for management accounting. 
Okay, look, it can prepare the accounts based on the two, okay, either from cost account side as well as from the uh, financial account side. Okay, however, these two profits will be very distinct. That's why I'm trying to say that at the end of the day, okay, if a company maintains the two systems individually or separately, then you need to carry that reconciliation, okay, to ensure that uh, the two accounts don't have problems. Okay, they don't have uh, any, they, you can explain each other the difference, you can reconcile those differences, okay. The profit as per the financial accounting is 10,000. The profit as per the marine account information is let's say 5,000. So why do you have a difference of 5,000? How can you reconcile that difference of uh, 5,000? Okay, so it is more work you should, okay? Uh, if the company will be using the interlocking account system, okay? But hey, you can use it definitely. It's not that you can't use it, but it's a lot of work, more manpower, okay? Uh, which might not be justified, okay? So in looking integrated integrated accounting system here, information is recorded once for the two separate purposes. This can save time and effort at the recording stage, but may decrease effort at the presentation stage. Okay, to make a distinction between those two. But as I mentioned, uh, this is not a problem nowadays. Why? Because the company, most companies, they don't use money system. They use computerized accounting system. So all you just need to make is to make a query to the accounting system. Okay. Uh, I would want to get financial accounting reports at the point in time as first of December. Okay, so just make a query, uh, and that should be easy to carry out. In the case of the interlocking, okay, here separate ledger systems are maintained for financial information and the costing information. So you maintain two records, okay, one is for the company internal uses, and one the other one is for the company external uses. Okay, this increases the recorded effort but can be uh but can be more, uh, more efficient better when uh, present information because you don't need to make any reconcil you don't you don't need to uh, uh, try to make that distinction of the information the financial and the money accounting because you have been maintaining two set of books in quotes okay all through you have been maintaining two set of books however you need to make a reconciliation to ensure that there's no any mistake that has been made between when presenting those two set of information however it's more tiresome okay that means you may even require more manpower because you must maintain two individual and distinct accounts. Okay. <clears throat> Don't forget to be present of the, the statement. Okay. Uh, this statement is it for integrated or is it for interlocking? Okay. So it's well enough you get to know the key difference between the two. Okay. Uh, because you will be presented with the, that definition. Okay. It's a point to be in point where this is interlocking or this is integrated accounting system. Question so far. Aisha, question? No. Okay, great. <clears throat> As mentioned, don't forget, in the modern world, okay, uh, quite unlikely is or will be the companies uh, be presenting uh, two uh, presenting two distinct accounts. Okay. So most of the time it's the entry okay of the data is going to be done once okay uh, the computer can make that distinction okay uh, for most account system they can make that distinction uh, at the point of query okay if you make a query to the system uh, whether you want a financial financial report or a management report okay it's easier okay uh, either way okay they have all their own advantages so these are very system okay uh, it's of course one of the key advantage of these of the system okay uh, it's much more faster you can make a comparison uh, with the manual system where you're going to be manually recording the entries, for example, okay, out of work because uh, the chance of you making mistake is very high. Okay, don't forget in case you're going to have a manual account system, the chance of mistakes are very high. Okay, uh, you, you can't compare yourself in terms of month, uh, in terms of numerical information uh, with with a computer. You that is okay. It's other uh, you, it's you can't do that comparison. Okay. So, because in case the company is going to be using a computer system, uh, the chance of data being more accurate is greater than in case the company is going to be using a manual system. Okay, and of course, in terms of the employees, okay, you're going to have more employees. The need for employees is much more greater if you do have, I mean, a manual accounting system. Okay. Anyway, as a company, of course, you have to make a decision. You have to do a cost benefit analysis. Okay. Uh, or if you are a very, you are, let's say, you are your uh, 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 uh the individuals, then you may or not say that. Do we need us to have a computer system? Okay. Uh, don't forget the accounting system comes at a cost. Okay, they're not for free. Okay, they're quite expensive most of the time. Okay. 
uh, most of the system. Okay, the better, the better the system, they're not very expensive. Uh, so you have to consider, okay, do we actually need uh, the computer system or can we maintain a running system, okay? So you have to weigh what is, what advantages are you going to be getting? Uh, what is going to be the potential cost of us having this system, okay? So you do a cost benefit analysis, okay? And of course the benefit have always will have to, or always need to, okay, outweigh the cost. So most account information are numerical, okay, and of course computer Excel are dealing with that type of data, okay. Uh, as I mentioned, don't forget, uh, quite likely even better than a computer, okay. And this computer security system should offer the following advantages of a manual system, okay. And this is just simple advantage I've written down here. There are more than this, okay. So this is just to uh, uh, give you more light. Okay, of course, faster provision of information, that is for sure, okay? That it is much more easier to present information or to have access to the information uh, compared to the case of a manual system, okay? For the, in the case of manual system, at the end of the month, what will happen is that you have to individ, if, for example, you do prepare accounts once a month, okay? And mean, therefore, you may, you, every end of the month, you have to manually prepare those accounts, okay? Uh, account for rent, account for salaries, uh, account for electricity. So the, you will have to manually prepare each of the account. However, if the company is following a computer system, you don't need to do that, okay? You don't need to do that. What happens is that you do it only grid B. Once you have imported, once the data has been entered, okay, in court at the point of prime entry, okay, uh, the first time that data is entered, that is it. The computer need to pick those accounts. This is a sale, okay? So it, all those T accounts, it'll be done, okay? The trial balance, it will be done automatically by the computer system, uh, compared, compared to the case of a manual system. The provision information that would be not be easily be available with that computerized account system. There are other information that will, might not be available if you to use a manual system, okay? More information cannot be, may, may not be, might be available to you, okay? You have more access to, let's say, in court, a richer source of information, okay? Uh, for example, if you want to do, let's say, uh, a data analysis, okay, a data analysis, okay? It's possible in case you do have <coughs> a computer system. An example, let's put the case of a retailer. You may want to understand, okay? Uh, yes, the information that was entered in the system was for the purpose of accounting. However, you can use that information for other purposes, for example, you can want to decide, okay, we as uh, task kids, for example, okay, we would want to know when do we make all the, when do we make most of the purchases? At what point of the day do we make most purchases, okay? Uh, do we make at uh, nine in the morning or is it at four in the evening? Don't forget, you can just query the system, okay, by going through, uh, uh, doing some simple charts, okay? So it is possible to even do a call data analysis because you have more data at your disposal, okay? How much, of, uh, which day of the week are we more busy, okay? By simply querying the system to understand the number of the amount of sales that they do make within a given uh, day within the week, okay? That might not be available in case you maintain um, a manual system, okay? The cost one setup, it is, uh, it, the, uh, the information processing is much more cheaper, okay? As I mentioned, you don't need to employ, uh, I don't know, a huge number of uh, employees, okay? Compared to what we have done, if we are to have uh, a manual system, manual accounting system, okay. More accurate data is going to be uh, definitely you're going to be able to get more data that is more accurate, okay. And don't forget the chance of the system making errors. It can make errors, okay, but it's much more lower compared to a human system, okay. A human, uh, uh, the human themselves entering that data, okay. The chance of mistake, the chance of errors are very high uh, in that particular case, in that particular regard. <clears throat> That's in case of the use of the computer's accounting system, okay, uh, which may be better, okay, uh, compared to the case of uh, the use of manual systems, okay. As I mentioned, don't forget, uh, you as a company, okay, you as a business, uh, you have to first do that analysis, okay. Uh, what do we need, okay? Uh, is this set of information going to be received, going to be better or not? Is it going to help us? Okay, so you need to do that. Uh, sit down and do a cost benefit analysis. As I mentioned, uh, the benefit you could be saving for use of the system ought to be greater than the cost. 
other is the case, the cost is greater than the benefits, then why are you doing it in the first place? Okay, what are the, are the advantages? Okay, don't forget, uh, most often, okay, this system costs money, okay, the, and the cost of money, okay, uh, in terms of the purchase or the purchase cost, as well as maintenance cost, okay. Uh, so you need to have done that analysis to see whether uh, it is gain beneficial for you. But of course, for this business, uh, if you don't want to use a system, okay, you can use Excel, okay. The Microsoft Excel can also be used in, as an account system, okay, in the worst case scenario, okay. But it's much, most, much better than in case you get to use using a manual system, okay. The use of simply the use of Microsoft Excel, okay, can also be used as an accounting system. Okay, if you don't want to buy Oracle, uh, you don't want to buy uh, some system, yeah? you don't want to buy uh, what else, okay, QuickBook, okay. Uh, so in, in case you don't want to buy those account system, okay, or rather they're not, you don't see the benefit, then Excel can be customized to become like an accounting system. But of course, uh, not the best, but can also be used for that particular purpose, okay. Question so far? <clears throat> Which name? Which name? Yes. Mm, any questions so far? No. Okay, great. Now, when it comes to processing of the information, okay, as soon as you gain to with a computer system, okay, now what are the steps that you're going to go through? Okay, of course, the first thing is about data processing, it's about data entry, okay, it's going to be the data entry, okay. Same example, the customer is making a purchase from a store, okay, that's the service data. Now, what do you do after okay, that, okay? Now, you need to have that data entry into the computer system, okay, if whatever method you're going to be using. Uh, with a gate to be a scan, okay. Uh, most of the time, they're going to be a, a, a scan of the maybe the barcode of the products, okay. They go with the point of data collection, okay. What's next? Data processing, a simple process, for example, uh, could be addition, okay. The customer has bought uh, 10 units, okay. Uh, what happens the system grid if there are 10 units, okay, each costing uh, 100, therefore, the company itself will do the data processing, okay. Uh, who the customer ought to pay is 10 times 100 to give us a thousand. That's a simple example, okay? We have the computer itself to collect the data, okay? Then process that data, okay? Now it'll be called the data processing uh, point, okay? Now an example could be uh, what we call a file update. A file update could be an, a simple example. That this product we are selling, we as Taskis Market, for example, okay, uh, is has a discount of let's say uh, two percent, okay. So don't forget there'll be also if the company is doing, for example, uh, the discount is only on the weekend, okay. Now the file need to be updated, okay. For example, uh, on the weekend only, okay. Then from Monday to Friday, maybe for example, okay. Uh, there is there's no discount offered, okay. But on Saturday and Sunday then we need to update the file so that when, as the data is being processed, it will be picking the new set of information, okay? Now this product, okay, is discount is only available from Monday uh, to Friday, okay? On Saturday and Sunday, there's a discount to be offered to the customer, okay? There's a simple file update, okay? Now, after the data has been processed, what happens, therefore, it need, therefore, definitely to be, uh, in quote, to be uh, uh, communication, okay? Uh, either you want to extract uh, after the processing, you may want to extract the information, okay? Uh, either you want to extract the financial accounting reports, or you want to extract maybe the management, management accounting reports, okay? An example, you want to determine by the end of the day, how much sales have we made? That is a financial accounting report you want to extract, okay? Maybe as the same set of information, you may want to extract, okay? The management accounting report, okay? What was the cost of the item we have sold? That's the most was money accounting report. Okay, we have sold ten units of uh, of glasses. Okay, uh, what the cost? What cost did we incur? Okay, we incurred uh, uh, we made a sale of ten units. Okay, the cost was let's say ninety bob per each of the unit. So therefore, our cost so far. Okay, the cost we incurred in provide that product is equal to ten times ninety. It was nine hundred. Okay, that's what was the cost information you want to extract. Okay, 
And of course, on that, it goes to users, okay? It's now upon you as a user to extract that information, okay? Uh, I, as the uh, payables accountant, I want to extract data concerning the payables, okay? As a receivable accountant, I want to information regarding the receivables, okay? And you, as the uh, cash accountant, is more towards the cash position of the company and making the reconciliation, okay? So, of course, each of the user need to have his own set of information, okay? Uh, you, as a CEO, what do you want? You may not be concerned to us getting to know uh, when the sale was made, but you may not be concerned with the total sales value, okay? So each of the user within the system, okay, uh, and it need to be customized. The, the system need to be customized in such a way it provide information to the user on their own individual needs, okay? Not all information need to be the same, okay? It depends on what do you need. As a care accountant for cash, you are going to be more towards the cash. As an accountant for payable, you're going to be considered more towards the payable side. And you can access information uh, regarding the receivable, okay? So the information need to be concentrated to what, based on the need, okay? Give the users the right based on what they need, okay? Okay, and that's really the like, same sort of, okay, uh, that we're going to have, by the time we're going to have data entry, all the time that the users will be using that information that have been uh, uh, processed within the system. Okay. <clears throat> Now, in the case of the computer system, okay, uh, don't forget uh, what happened first is to be a character, okay? Uh, okay, so we begin, let me just here. So we go up, okay, what happens is that we're going to go upward, okay? So first, of course, you're going to have a character. Character is simply, uh, it's like, yeah, let me actually, okay? Let's see here we have the character. Let's see we have here, okay? The C itself is a character, okay? Uh, which constitutes the basic, okay, uh, entry in the system, okay? The alphabet A to Z, as well as the numeric between zero and nine, okay? On itself, generally, it might not hold a lot of meaning, okay? However, sometimes it can be defined to hold a meaning, okay? Uh, for example, this example, M to represent male and F to represent female, okay? But in most cases, uh, a character on its, on its own, okay, may not be able to communicate a lot of information, okay? It may not be able to communicate a lot of information. However, once you have one or two characters coming together, or at, least two, at least two characters coming together, okay? Then you can have called a key field, okay? A key field. Uh, for example, okay, the, Number of the employee number, okay, employee number 1192. Now that's gonna make sense, okay? We can say therefore that this is again, therefore, this code defines the employee. Now this is a field, okay? Um, now, generally, what happens is that the, or the field, okay, it doesn't, it doesn't have to be a key field, by the way, okay? Not always, a, not, not always a must, that the field need to be a key field, okay? Like the name of a person is not a key field, okay? Uh, the name of Mary is shared across many users. So in itself, Mary is not a key field. However, there are things that are key field, okay? They do represent only that particular person, okay? For example, the ID number, okay? That itself is a key field. It represents that particular person only, okay? It's not shared across other users, okay? And the employee number you have here, it represents only that employee. That's why, it, that's why it, def, it is defined to as a key field, okay? It's only allocated of that number or that uh, car, uh, field only represents or give information regarding that particular employee. Whatever here, the assuming number, for example, okay? The assuming number is a key field, okay? Uh, your number is not shared across any other person, any other student. It's only for you as that particular student. Your student admission number, for example, okay? Is a key field, okay? So the field, I think I mentioned that already, also known as an attribute, okay? So the field, uh, also known as an attribute. So each field holds a separate piece of data related to the right to record, for example, the customer name, uh, the address, okay? Uh, the credit limit, the invoice of studying, okay? So all these, they do represent, they give information uh, regarding uh, a given uh, individual or a given company, okay? Or a given entity, okay? However, if the field is unique to that entity, then it's called a key field. Okay, I think I'll, I'll mention that. Okay. Now, once you have information, name, address, telephone number, all of them together, that's become therefore a record. Okay. 
is going to give us a series of information regarding maybe a customer, regarding maybe a supplier, okay? All the suppliers, uh, uh, when was the company formed, okay? This, uh, this supplier is a company. Uh, when was this supplier formed, okay? Uh, what is their pain number, okay? What is the address, what is the allocation, okay? Uh, do we have any amount that is still uh, paying to, to pay them, okay? So all that become therefore what we call a record, okay? We become therefore a record, okay? Now, once you have a series of records, okay, customer A, customer B, customer C, with all their detail, they will come for a file, okay, they come for a file, okay, all the way from the character to a file, okay. <clears throat> Doesn't case we're in the case of a computerized system. Moses. Yes. How are you? Fine, fine. Okay. Can you give an example of a key field other than what I've mentioned? Um, example of a key field other than what I've mentioned. A certain. A certain. Uh, Product number. Mm -hmm. Like, like, uh, like the product number that uh, uniquely identifies it. Yes, like the the, the the uh, like for a phone, there's the serial number. Yes, that's okay. a good example. Like in the case of a phone, okay, the serial number of that phone, okay, the I M I think it's called I M E I, okay, International Mobile Department. Number any yeah, in itself, don't forget that is in the same is a unique number. That's a key field. Okay, that's a great example, uh, Moses. Yes, okay, that's in same is a key field. It represents only that particular phone in the world. Okay, it's not going to be replicated elsewhere. Okay, that I M E I represent only that particular phone in the entire world. Yeah, that is a good example of a key field. Okay. <clears throat> Now, what of type of data are you going to be processing? Okay, you have called the transaction data. Example: the sale you are making, the purchase you are making. Okay, uh, that in itself is or called transaction data. Okay, you're trying to uh, have this information. It's a transaction that is occurring. Okay, uh, it records information about each transaction. Okay, if you're making a sale, you record there's a customer uh, we have sold to. Uh, these are the units you have uh, sold them to at this particular price. They have paid X amount of money. The balance is why that in itself is what we call a transaction data. It is about the AZ information regarding the particular uh, transaction we are having. Okay. Now, studying or reference data, okay, essentially it does not, it, it's in itself as the name is suggesting, it's like studying data. Okay. Uh, it is not going to be uh, changing now and then. Don't forget, if you make, you have a customer, the customer can buy today, buy tomorrow. And they buy different items altogether. Okay, so that can be transaction data. However, their name doesn't change. It's the same same customer. So instead of the name of the customer, can be part of a studying data. Okay, the address of the customer. Okay, uh, what else? Their bank account. Okay, it doesn't change every day. Okay, it may change, but it doesn't change every day. Okay, therefore that can be part of like a uh, reference, uh, reference data. Okay. So we have for the transaction, I'll give an example, if a customer buys today, okay, that itself is a transaction data, okay. Uh, tomorrow, it will be very different, okay, it doesn't remain static, okay. However, the starting data or the reference data about that customer, most often they'll be static, okay, they are not changing every day, okay. Uh, their name, their address, their bank account, okay, uh, what else, uh, their location, it don't, it don't be changing every day, okay. Uh, so therefore, that comes for point of the studying data. Okay, what you have to be quite careful. They are not permanent, by the way. Okay, they are not always being permanent. Just take note. So they are relative. Okay, this is a term. They are relatively permanent. Okay, for the term to use here. Okay, well they can change. Uh, customers, the company's name it does not always remain static. It can change. The customer, the, uh, the the company's name. Okay, if the company, if the customer is a company, they can change. Okay, even individual themselves, you can change your name anyway. Uh, so generally, don't forget, it's all enough that you do keep an update, okay, as a control measure, okay, the frequent 
and maybe once in a while updating or call the master file okay the master data okay it's one the answer that should keep updating okay uh, because the bank account can change the location can change okay it doesn't change every day but it's good enough that you be have uh, uh the control on how you shall be updating uh the master or the starting data once in a while okay i think we did mention those controls can put in place for example okay actually updating itself is a control okay having one particular person who does the update is itself is a control uh, so that in case in fear they shall be updating uh the information the information you can do to tell to track and say that the only person who had the right to change this information was person a b c okay and by the way, regarding the master data, you uh, the updating of the master data, uh, the studying data, okay, you have to be very careful, okay, uh, because fraud can be committed very easily, okay. I've seen a case where uh, people go and even create uh, an employee, okay, in the entity, okay, uh, they create a virtual employee, okay, what I think you hear of ghost workers, but they are paid for, okay. So when it comes to the mass data, uh, then care has to be taken very well. Okay, otherwise you may have cases of uh, having a ghost supplier. Okay, having a ghost employee. Okay, so care has to be taken quite well. Okay, uh, of course, the case the case of government, the problem is much more higher, but it's still there even in the private sector. Okay, uh, there's a case that if I remember, there's a case that uh, a company. Um, I think an employee, okay, if this was an accountant but it's responsible for payroll, okay. One of the controls that a company put in place is that the accountant responsible for payroll cannot create the employees. By the way, who creates employees in the system in the, of the company? Who is meant to create the employee? By creating, I mean to create the data about the employee uh, in the industry. Hirani. Yes, sir. Yes. Mm. Is it the person that employs them? Mm -hmm. Now, who is, if you remember, we, have, we are discussing uh, the different departments. We mentioned the finance department, payroll department, uh, marketing department, human resource department. We mentioned a number of departments. I hope you should remember uh, the functional departmentation. I hope you should remember. Now, among those departments, where is or who creates the employee? Human resource. Human resource, of course, the human resource department is the human resource department, okay? Which means, therefore, if the payroll accountant, which who, uh, is the payroll department, can have the right to create the employee, then that is a huge problem, okay? But we'll don't forget, these are the people who are paying, okay? So that if they can create an employee, then they can create a fictitious employee and pay that employee. It means there's no effective control within the particular company, okay? And there's an entity that actually lost, I think, almost 10 million over a span of eight years because they didn't have enough control regarding the creation of the employee in the entity. Okay. Okay, let me look for it actually. Okay, welcome back to our class. Okay, topic two, which is on an introduction. Uh, to management information, introduction towards management information, not accounting information, okay, not the financial accounting, but management information, okay. <laughs> so what this topic involves, okay, is simply uh, we are going to be going through the data, what do we mean by data, more or less what do we mean by information, and what do we mean by management information. So discuss the purpose of management information, uh, the source of the management information, okay, the classification you can have, okay, uh, what qualities, okay, do we look out for when using money information, okay, uh, what is the, what should be, time to use, yeah, time to better time to use, what are the desired, okay, features that the money information ought to have if we have to say that this is going to be uh, good information we can use, okay, what are the potential problems that comes with uh, the money information, the use of the money information, okay? And at the end of the day, we discuss what we call the role of the trainee accountant. Okay, it's the role of the trainee accountant, okay? <clears throat> That's what we're discussing in this topic, okay? A very short topic for sure, okay? So let's straight, data and information, okay? Now, what is data? Now, data 
represent what we call raw information, okay, uh, that, is, that is yet to be processed, that is yet to be become meaningful, okay. So the raw information, for example, uh, how many products have been sold? 10. That is it. So what does it mean? Okay, 10 units. So it does not give more information. In itself, it's not meaningful. Like for example, uh, customer's name, okay? It's information, okay? But it's not meaningful. Then what about customer's name, okay? If we try to process it, okay? Uh, for example, uh, the, cost, the sales made 10 units, okay? At one price, uh, uh, the 10 units at 20 per unit, okay? Therefore, you can see for the sales income and during the day is 10 times 20, 200. Now that makes sense now. It has been processed, okay? It has been converted into something meaningful. We can take a set by the end of the day, okay? Uh, we have a sales income of $200, for example, okay? So that information has been processed to make sense, okay? Now, in case it is the raw data where it is yet to be processed, the point of process that information is yet to process, then that's the so called data. So this is a, is a static term, okay, for facts, figures, and measurement, okay, facts, uh, figures, okay, uh, measurements, what else, mm, yeah, okay, uh, raw information, okay, uh, that is yet to be processed. Data are the raw material for data processing, okay. Uh, as I mentioned, the data is information that is yet to be processed, okay. It's, it is, I would call, unprocessed information, if that is a term, okay. Uh, in itself, okay. Once we process it, once the data is being processed, okay, uh, then it becomes information. Okay, once we do attach sense, okay, once the data starts making sense, it becomes therefore information. Okay, information is data that has been processed in such a way that has remained meaningful to the person who receives it. Okay, uh, we are trying to make sense to the data that you have received. Okay. Uh, for example, okay, um, which is a better example can I have? Maybe, for example, uh, you can have, let me just put this. <clears throat> let me actually just share my writing area like this. And here, give me a second. Where is it? Yes, it is. Okay, for example, uh, we can have this be the data. Mm, we have customer's name. Mm -hmm. Their bank balance. Mm -hmm. Uh, so years of purchase, so years uh, history, we have the history, we have this person, okay, four years, okay, that is data, okay, but however, you may want to use that data to make sense out of it, for example, uh, based on the bank balance, okay, based on how many years of experience we have, we can decide how much discount should we give to this particular customer, in short, we are trying to synthesize the bank balance, the years of uh, history we have with this particular customer, we to discern, okay, how much discount do we need to give this particular person, 2% or 3%, okay? So you're using that data, okay? You process that data, okay, to discern, uh, to make a decision based on that particular data. You process that data uh, to make a decision as to whether it is worthwhile or how much discount we ought to give to the customer, okay? Now that is what we are trying to convert or process the data into information. Okay, ensure therefore data become therefore. Submit. Let me admit some people here. Okay, therefore data uh, become therefore the process in uh, information becomes data that are being processed. Okay, data that are being processed to, to, to an extent that it now makes sense. Okay. Here, this data doesn't make sense. What's that? What do we mean by customer's name? What does it tell us? Okay, the bank balance. Okay, uh, the, in this number of years we have this person, it is yet to say we are yet to say the size to process that information. So, so far, therefore, this are uh, hope they do not communicate any meaningful information. But now, once we connect with the bank balance, uh, the history we have with this customer, once we say all this information, now we can then be able to understand how much discount should we give this particular person. Okay. <clears throat>
okay <clears throat> You mentioned, don't forget the other day, okay, the person who does require this information is a management, okay. Uh, what is management? Look, this again be people who are in charge of the running of the company, okay, that's mean by the management, okay. Uh, the people who are responsible, the people who are, who are given uh, the mandate of running the affairs of the company by the shareholders, by the owner of the business, okay. Uh, so what does include, therefore, the day-to-day -day management of the, of the company, the so-called the executive management, as well as the non-executive, but I mean, therefore, uh, the board also of director. So all these persons will be given a responsibility uh, by the shareholders of overseeing that the company affairs are being managed well, okay, uh, and as well as the one who are managing on a day-to-day -day basis, uh, that we mean by the management, okay, that we imply by the management, okay. <clears throat> So money is a term used for the people in charge of running a business, the managers or other organization, okay? And conventionally as mentioned, they include both the executive, okay? So this can include the executive as well as the non-executive. Okay, so it could both the both executive and the non-executive. What is the difference? Executive, don't forget it, they're the one who involved in the day-to-day -day running of the company. The non-executive, on the other hand, okay, uh, these are the ones who are going to be given the mandate, okay, for example, the board of directors to oversee that the executive, okay, the day-to-day -day management of the company, uh, running the company as fair as they should. Okay, so this is more to us, the oversight. These are the ones who are involved in the day-to-day -day management of the company. Okay. Therefore, management information, okay, can describe therefore simply as the information that, that is presented, okay, uh, to those uh, charged with the governance of the company, to those who are involved in the running of the company, in order for them to make decisions, okay. The set of information that they will be provided with, okay, uh, to assist them in making those decisions, okay, is referred to as the management information, okay. Therefore, management information, their, uh, management information therefore can be defined uh, or described as information that is given to those people who are charged of running an organization to help them in making the decision. Okay, uh, for example, I think I mentioned the case of uh, we as Safaricom we do provide uh, home fiber okay data okay we all make a decision as whether well, should we continue uh, offering the home fiber at this particular price do we increase the price or do we reduce the price for example okay. So we are going to be presented with a, set, a certain set of information. Uh, for example, the cost we do incur in offering this service, okay, uh, versus maybe what our competitors are offering, okay. So the manager, you'll be presented with all this set of information is upon you to make that decision, okay. So the information you're presented, okay, to help you make those decisions, to make the management decisions, okay, is only for us the management information, okay. So that was the management information. <clears throat> and of course, generally, don't forget the information you'll be presented with okay, can be both financial as well as non-financial. Okay, can be both financial as well as non-financial. For example, financial, what's the cost we do in, in providing uh, the home fiber? That's a financial information. Okay, uh, what impact was, is it going to be having? That was going to be the best thing. If we discontinue this operation, okay, if we discontinue, let's say, the home fiber uh, service to our customer, okay, what will happen to the employees who are employed, okay, uh, to uh, provide this home fiber, home, home, home fiber services, okay, what do we do with the gross men, okay, so there's so many things you have to consider, uh, what's the implication towards the country economy, okay, so there's so many other things you need to consider that are beyond the financial impact, okay. Uh, but don't forget, okay, if you consider a commercial company, the key consideration is more towards the financial impact, for example, of the decision, okay. Uh, what will be the financial repercussions of us either taking the decision or not taking the decision, okay. That is more towards the financial angle, okay. <clears throat> In the case of the non-financial, don't forget they're not being measured in terms of money, okay. We don't evaluate uh, uh, all the key purpose of this evaluation is not for the financial impact, okay. As uh, Vian mentioned, uh, we want to discontinue a certain operation. We want to discontinue, uh, as such case, we want to discontinue operation, okay. Uh, of course, you may, I don't know, maybe you can't, uh, you may want to consider, okay. Uh, what should happen to our employees? Yes, we discontinue the operation, uh, 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 our operations. What happens to the employees? Okay, we have to do happen. Okay, uh, that is more towards an financial consideration uh, you want to put forth. Okay, 
that's the for not forget finance information can be classed into finance information as well as the non-financial information okay for financial information is more to us you can evaluate okay uh, in terms of the money okay in terms of cost reduction uh, in terms of increase in the revenue uh, in terms of increase in shareholders wealth okay so all that increase in tax you pay for example so all that is more towards financial uh, information okay now what's the purpose of the information okay how does this information help the managers i think we mentioned already they help them in planning okay the future of the business okay uh going back to the case to the example you're giving of safaricom okay we want to plan okay how do we go ahead with for example uh this data service you offer to a customer okay we want to pick a plan okay should we maybe increase the bandwidth of our customer or decrease it okay how do we go ahead with this particular uh service we are providing to our customer okay uh planning about the future of the company okay uh, what other investment might complement our current investment okay uh, already we have home five you already have an agreement on data provision so home five for example uh, is a good means of trying to earn more money because we are not going to be trying to invest you have huge extensive investment because already we do provide data okay okay i'm trying to think before uh, the home five was introduced for example okay so before all of that, the all of the they established uh, 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 intangible okay, uh, wealth in the economy. Okay, was very common. Definitely was the biggest even then those days. Okay, before the data services were provided. Okay, now you want to provide this data service. Okay, only you can uh, ride on your good name in court. Okay, which you already have established in the past years. You have been operation. Okay, trying to plan about the future of the business. Do we expand from uh kenya okay to uh, uganda you are um uh, equity bank okay you want to expand your operations okay uh you want to expand from kenya to congo okay okay i think you've had uh equity bank have already acquired a number of, a number of uh, a bank in congo okay is a plan to expand okay don't forget you as manager you're going to be presenting the information okay that in case we go ahead and buy this bank in congo as equity bank this is going to be the impact okay uh, our revenue going to increase, decrease. Uh, this will decrease the cost you have been carrying to buy this bank in Congo. Okay, so all those is uh, is about management information. Okay, you're trying to make decisions as to how uh, you should go ahead. For example, make more acquisition, buy a new companies. Okay, trying to produce a new product. Okay, then you have control. Okay, control the progress of the business. For example, whether the budget sets in the planning set have been met. Okay, don't forget about support controlling. Uh, you have to make an evaluation, okay? Uh, maybe, for example, okay, uh, what was the plan? What was our expectations, okay? And what have we actually realized, okay? Uh, so the money information you presented, okay, uh, actual versus what was anticipated, uh, what was expected can also guide you in making the decision, okay? Maybe uh, the time of investment, uh, as equity bank, we were anticipating that. Uh, this new bank we have bought in Congo is going to increase our revenue by uh, from the current 100 billion per year, okay, to 120 billion per year. However, you realize that the 20 billion we were anticipating is not going to be actualized. So what do we do now going forward? Okay, we have an investment we have already made. Okay, we have full control measures in not for us to achieve uh, what we were expecting. Okay, uh, if the reality, if the actual figures are different from what we were ant anticipating controlling okay then of course it's just to make a decision okay if even if we put the control measures we are, are anticipating okay uh, maybe you never actualize what you are you had seen okay uh, you would not do other analysis you never did a good analysis of your new company you wanted to buy okay so what do you do you can decide let's dispose of this particular company we as task is even if we get the money we will never survive so what do you do we discontinue operations okay that's a decision you have to make uh, based on the information to be presented with okay uh the money information to be presented to you it's about trying to assist you in making the decision and making the best decision of the company okay it's about planning controlling and making the decisions but the purpose of management information question Okay, no question, then great, we can meet on Thursday and we pick from there. Okay, we pick from there uh, once on, 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 on Thursday, on Thursday, I think on Thursday, yes, on Thursday, uh, we pick from there. Okay, great, see you then.
enjoy your day. Do. Don't forget to sign. <laughs>